Whenever we approach the launch of Starship, there are some very important tests that need to be conducted before SpaceX can proceed with the flight. One of these crucial tests is the static fire of the booster's 33 Raptor engines. This test is one of the final checks to ensure the rocket is ready to fly, and SpaceX has just successfully completed this step. In today's video, we'll be talking about all the details of this recent static fire test and what it means for the upcoming Starship Flight 7 launch. But before we delve any deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates on Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. For the upcoming Starship Flight 7, SpaceX is using Super Heavy Booster 14 paired with Ship 33. On the morning of November 9th, 2023, SpaceX conducted a critical static fire test of Booster 14 at their Starbase facility in Texas. This booster is an advanced iteration, featuring refined structural reinforcements and updated plumbing for its 33 Raptor engines. The engines themselves are the latest versions of the Raptor 2 series, known for being more efficient, producing greater thrust, and being simpler to manufacture compared to the original Raptors used in earlier prototypes. During the static fire test, all 33 Raptor engines were fired up simultaneously for around 10 seconds. The static fire lasted longer than many of SpaceX's previous tests. Although the company hasn't officially explained why the test was extended, it could be due to changes in engine configuration or updates to the booster's structure. Musk's excitement about the upcoming launch was evident when he tweeted, Getting ready for Flight 7. This simple yet telling statement hints that SpaceX is targeting a launch date as early as December 2023. Supporting this optimism, the Federal Communications Commission recently granted SpaceX a launch window that spans from December 17th to June 17th. If SpaceX can achieve a December launch, it would be a thrilling way to close out the year. However, for any SpaceX launch to proceed, regulatory approval from the Federal Aviation Administration is required. The FAA's licensing process ensures public safety, but it has frequently faced criticism for being too slow and bureaucratic. While the FAA technically has 80 days to approve or deny an application after it's submitted, the pre-application phase can stretch out for several months or even years. This lengthy timeline has frustrated many in the commercial space industry, including SpaceX, which operates on an accelerated development schedule. Despite these regulatory challenges, SpaceX is pressing forward with preparations for Flight 7. Now that Booster 14's static fire test is complete, the next step is testing Ship 33, which will serve as the second stage for Flight 7. Ship 33 will undergo its own static fire test to make sure its engines are ready. Once both the booster and the ship pass their tests, they will be assembled on the launch pad for final checks. If everything goes according to plan and the FAA gives its approval, Flight 7 could launch as early as December. While preparing for the next Starship flight, SpaceX is also engaged in a legal battle over the use and expansion of its launch site. Currently, SpaceX finds itself embroiled in a heated dispute with the California Coastal Commission over its operations at Vandenberg Space Base, a key location for many of its missions. Vandenberg Space Base is essential for SpaceX's operations and is a key part of the United States space infrastructure. Choosing a launch site depends on several important factors, including the trajectory required for the mission, proximity to the equator for energy efficiency, safety concerns related to nearby population centers, available infrastructure, and access to open water for managing debris. For missions requiring polar orbits, used for Earth observation and weather monitoring, a launch site must support a north-south trajectory. Vandenberg is uniquely suited for these missions because it allows rockets to launch southward over the Pacific Ocean, avoiding populated areas and foreign countries. This makes it safer and more practical than many other U.S. launch sites. Launching into polar orbits from locations like Cape Canaveral in Florida is far more challenging. Rockets would need to perform complex maneuvers to avoid flying over land, increasing fuel use and costs. Vandenberg avoids these complications. The base has also been a key part of U.S. space history. 
It has hosted many significant launches, including satellites for NASA, the Department of Defense, and commercial clients. Vandenberg is equipped with advanced infrastructure, including Space Launch Complex 3 and Space Launch Complex 4, which SpaceX frequently uses for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. These facilities support a wide range of launches and are critical for accommodating the technical needs of complex missions. SpaceX's reliance on Vandenberg extends beyond its technical capabilities. The base plays a crucial role in the company's contracts with the U.S. Space Force, which depend on Vandenberg for national security missions. For example, the Space Force has proposed increasing the number of Falcon 9 launches from Vandenberg from 36 to 50 per year. Despite this, the California Coastal Commission has rejected a proposal to allow more rocket launches from the site. The decision has been criticized for being politically motivated, as some commissioners openly expressed personal disagreements with Musk's political views. For example, one commissioner accused Musk of prioritizing profit over environmental concerns and referenced his controversial tweets during the discussion. Observers believe that California's political climate may have played a role in the commission's decision. California is predominantly a democratic state. While Musk has recently shown support for Republican figures, including former President Donald Trump. In 2024, Musk announced his political shift toward the Republican Party and endorsed Trump for the presidential election. He also became a significant Republican donor, contributing approximately $118 million to support Trump's campaign through America PAC. Musk has also been critical of California's policies, leading to public disputes with state officials. He has described California as the land of over-regulation, over-litigation, over-taxation, and in 2021, he moved Tesla's headquarters from California to Texas, citing regulatory challenges. Additionally, Musk has criticized California's educational policies, particularly a law that restricts schools from informing parents about their children's gender identity changes. He referred to this legislation as the final straw and announced plans to move SpaceX's headquarters from California to Texas in response. So, the rejection of SpaceX's proposal appears to be influenced by a combination of political disagreements and personal biases against Musk. Musk responded by filing a federal lawsuit against the commission, accusing it of political bias and overreach. The lawsuit aims to overturn the commission's decision and secure SpaceX's ability to continue launching rockets from Vandenberg. While the legal battle unfolds, Musk is also preparing for the possibility of shifting more launches to Florida. Florida has long been a hub for space exploration, and its political climate is far more welcoming to SpaceX. Musk has a strong relationship with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who has actively supported the aerospace industry in the state. After Hurricane Ian hit Florida in 2022, SpaceX provided 120 Starlink satellites to help restore Internet services in affected areas, earning praise from DeSantis. Florida's legislature has also passed laws to protect private spaceflight companies from lawsuits, further creating a business-friendly environment. Relocating more launches to Florida isn't a perfect solution for SpaceX. Florida's launch sites are designed for missions to equatorial orbits, not polar ones, so launching polar missions from there would require more fuel and increased costs. However, Florida offers other advantages, such as a well-established aerospace industry, a skilled workforce, and proximity to the equator, which provides a slight energy boost for rockets launching eastward. While navigating legal challenges with the California Coastal Commission, Musk and SpaceX continue to advance their projects, particularly the Starship program. The upcoming Starship Flight 7 is scheduled for January 11, 2025, from SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas. This mission will feature Ship 33, the first Block 2 upper stage, and Booster 14, a Block 1 vehicle. The flight aims to test the performance of these upgraded components, with the booster expected to execute a return to the launch site for recovery. The planned trajectory involves launching from Starbase, with the booster returning to the launch site for recovery. The upper stage will follow a suborbital path, 
culminating in a controlled landing in the ocean. This test is crucial for validating the design enhancements in the Block II upper stage and assessing the reusability of the booster. Meanwhile, SpaceX has also made progress in addressing issues identified during Starship's sixth test flight. In that flight, the Super Heavy booster was supposed to be caught by the launch tower's chopsticks mechanism. However, instead of being caught, the booster ended up performing a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX later identified the root cause of the problem, a loss of communication between the booster and the tower's control system. Musk explained that the team decided to abort the catch attempt out of caution, as proceeding without confirmed data could have risked damaging the tower or the booster. This cautious approach allowed them to collect valuable data while ensuring safety. The splashdown was not considered a failure, as the booster successfully executed its controlled descent and landing procedures. Despite not achieving the planned catch, SpaceX gathered critical information about the booster's performance during descent, as well as the reliability of the catch mechanism. Now, SpaceX engineers are implementing fixes to the communication system to prevent similar issues in future flights. This involves upgrading the software and enhancing the synchronization between the booster and the tower systems. The next test flight is expected to demonstrate these improvements as SpaceX moves closer to perfecting the booster catch technique. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with all things SpaceX and Starship. See you next time.